I think at this point I can only say hello. It is wonderful to see you all here tonight. I have uh, just a few words before you uh, to let you know of certain things with the service tonight. Tonight we are having communion. And as we have communion, and I know we have folks who are visiting, know that in the Presbyterian Church, it is an open table, which means that all are welcome to partake of communion here. Because COVID continues to persist, uh, we're having to do communion a little differently. And so tonight, you will be passing trays, and they'll have glasses in them. One glass, which you'll receive first, has a piece of bread in it. Take the glass that has a piece of bread. Hold on to that glass. Because what we will do is once everyone is served, this is the tricky part, we take off our masks, we take the bread, we eat our bread, we put our mask back on. That's just one of the things. And then we'll do the same thing with the juice as it goes around. So hang on to it and we'll all do it together. So it's that nice, cool move that if you wear glasses, that of course will be the time that your mask will hook on your glasses and you'll have a hard time getting it off. Other thing tonight that's different, that we always have to remind folks of, are candles and proper candle lighting etiquette. Because we will be passing the light down and you will be passing the light to your neighbor. So, neighbor, first, what not to do. My candle is lit. I do not throw my candle down like this because it throws hot wax on my neighbor. Yeah, don't do that. Not a good thing for Christmas. I keep my lit candle up and my neighbor tilts their candle into my lit candle. This has become almost like the regular yearly show. Uh, so remember good candle uh, etiquette. Also, since we are all wearing paper masks, try not to hold your candle too close to your face tonight. We do not want you to become a human candle. Finally, as is always the case, on Christmas Eve, we have all these wonderful poinsettias and they all need good homes so if you're sitting out there and you're eyeing one in particular as soon as the service is done come forward take it two three a whole handful whatever uh, and if you especially if you know someone to deliver that poinsettia to what a great thing to do go see someone this Christmas with the gift of a poinsettia our last announcement has to do with our offering. <laughs> yeah! Our offering tonight. Uh, it has become our custom that on Christmas Eve, when we have our offering, we give it all away. And this year we are giving it to PDA, which stands for Presbyterian Disaster Assistance, which is already at work on the ground where the tornadoes and uh, Kentucky and the surrounding areas hit. Has it only been a week or so ago? It seems like so long ago, but it's only been a week. And so all the offering tonight, off it goes. And PDA is a wonderful uh, organization through our denomination that stays on the ground and will work with these people long term. They're there quickly, they work with other agencies, and then they stay as long as they can to help people out. And this is going to be a long-term disaster. All right, I believe that is it. So at this time, I invite you to stand and let us start with verses one and two of our first carol, O Come All Ye Faithful.
Rejoice! People of God, the light has come into the world. O oh God, now we light the candle of your nativity. Let the light banish the darkness. With the company of heaven and the sounds of great joy, you come to us. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed a time when those who walked in the shadows would see a great light. A light would shine and the child would be born to us. See, the world is made flesh and dwells among us. By it we behold God's glory, full of grace and truth. God in the highest. Alleluia, alleluia. You may be seated. Beloved in Christ, it is our duty and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and to go in heart and mind to Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass in the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us hear again from the Holy Scriptures the tale of the loving purpose of God, and let us make this house of prayer glad with our carols of praise. But first, because this of all things would rejoice Jesus' heart, let us pray to him for the needs of the whole world and all his people. For peace upon the earth he came to save. For love and unity within the one church he did build, for goodwill among all peoples. And particularly at this time, let us remember the poor, the cold, the hungry, the oppressed, the sick, and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all who do not know the Lord Jesus, or do not love him, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, 
whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven. May our prayers continue in a time of silent and personal prayer. Guide us always in paths of peace. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Beloved, I invite you to stand for the singing of carol number 123, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear.
seated. In our first reading tonight, we hear again from the prophet Isaiah. Before we go to the word, let us go to God in prayer. Gracious Lord, what a joyous night this is. What a night of sound and sight, a night of surprises, and yet a night when we hear a message that you have been telling us for long, long these many years. Lord, open our hearts once again. Open our minds. Open our ears so that we know your voice speaking to us. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. From the prophet Isaiah chapter 9. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shone. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time onwards and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. And we turn to the prophet Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. Once again, I invite you to stand and let us sing together, this time Carol 121, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
may be seated. Our next scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke in chapter 1. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Our next reading comes from Matthew chapter 1. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the angel shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us.
from Luke. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. This time, let us remain sitting and ponder these events with the singing of Away in the Manger. Continuing the story in Luke. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. There, this will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. 
But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Beloved, I invite you to stand as we sing carol number 119, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. You may be seated. Our last reading from tonight comes from John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light But he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, He gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, 
but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Beloved, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our service continues in a time of offering. If you please join with me in prayer. Oh Lord, what a story. What have we heard this night? What have we heard angels proclaiming? What are we to believe? That you dwell among us? That love is actually the answer? That through grace, the world can be changed. It can be made more as you intend. Lord, we, we take up this offering. We send out these gifts. They don't cover the need. But in them, in each penny, is that same love that you show to us. We strive every day, every day, to show that same love in the world. What a story. Love. So much chaos, so much hurt, so much pain. Surely there has to be some greater, more magnificent thing to happen. No child is born. Love comes into the world. And we are told to love one another as you love us. What an amazing story. 
We pray that we never lose sight of that. And we pray that every penny given here, somehow that spirit attaches to it, that it goes out, that people find healing, that they find wholeness, that somehow through your spirit, your word comes into their life. Let them know that they are not alone, that in the good, in the bad, in all things, you are with us always. It is in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. Oh, I lost him. Is Olin still up there? Have you heard it? Did you hear it tonight? Did you hear that story that we told? You didn't? You might have to listen again. Kenneth! Kenneth! Did you hear the story? Did you hear the story that was told? Did you, did you hear about those shepherds? Did you hear about those shepherds? They went out. They went out into the night. They were glorifying. I mean, these were shepherds. Shepherds. You could be a shepherd. Well, you could be a shepherd. They're not, they're not, they're nothing, you know, super spectacular. They're just like you. A shepherd and they saw something. Those are fun, aren't they? Shepherds. All of us, shepherds going out. What do you think, what do you think they told? What do you think they rejoiced? That night, these ordinary shepherds going out into the world, hearing, witnessing. God is still with us, even today. And then the story went on. We know the story went on. But I love that the story goes on in, in the most basic of, of things. Oh, sure, we've got nice silver here. Ooh. But what's underneath this silver? Ordinary stuff. Bread. You know, for us, juice. Ordinary stuff, ordinary people. Ordinary people that later gathered around an ordinary table. But heard the same extraordinary message. Grace. Grace fills the world. Grace can fill your heart as well. Love. Go out and love. See, hate is going to come upon me. Hate is going to come upon me. This body will be destroyed. But on the third day, I will live again. Because hate cannot kill love. Never, ever, ever. And so we come to this table, this wonderful, simple table. Regular, simple people. You're not simple. You're <laughs> complex, right? But you are you with regular people stuff. I like regular people stuff. Bills to pay, work that has to be done, COVID that won't go away, I'm tired of these masks. But I'm not tired of loving my neighbor and doing the best I can to keep you well. They come to the table and they hear those words. This is my body broken for you. For as long as you eat of this bread, remember me. Remember me in word. Remember me in deed. Go into the world. Will those who are helping to serve communion tonight please come forward at this time?
Saints, tonight a body is born. We know this body will be broken. We know this body will be resurrected. We know this body will live in you. Take and eat. At that same table, they were celebrating a whole different story. 
but still a story of freedom. A story of freedom. And he took the wine and he poured for these disciples, these disciples who were so like those shepherds from long ago. He poured for them and said, this cup is a sign of the new covenant. Through this cup is the forgiveness of sin. This cup, which is my blood shed for you, is not blood shed on the ground, wasted. There's blood in which there is life.
of the blood Christ shed for you. Saints, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Let it be always through your heart. Take and drink. weeks we have been lighting advent candles. We've lit a candle in hope, but that candle now burns. There it goes. No, I can't put out the hope. That's a great sign. There's a sermon right there. I can't put out the hope, but that hope now burns. That light shines through Christ. We have lit a candle for peace. And that peace now shines through Christ. We lit a candle for joy. And that candle now shines through Christ. And we lit a candle for love. I love it also will not. And that love shines brightly through Christ. And it is this light in Christ that we share with one another tonight. You have love in you, and because of that, I have hope. We couldn't be together last year. But together we are the light of Christ shining in the world.
Arise and shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And now go out into the night telling stories of good news and glad tidings. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.